Hey, what's up guys, it's CSAX here, coming to you with the final opening of the Darkness and Light arc. We finally have Into Darkness, the vampire-themed, blade-themed set with like a lot of crossover elements well, with different teams and stuff. This set is just so sweet, you guys. Um, as a lot of you guys know, I wasn't like super big on Masters of Evil, it's a fine set. I actually quite liked the Mystic Arts one. I really, really love Iron Fist main character, and I can't wait to play it. But, like, this is where the arc all comes together. It's This arc has, like, a real upward trajectory where, like, it's, like, decent, really good, and then, like, really, really good. I really like this Into Darkness arc. I'm very excited to open it, so let's go ahead and get into it. Still on the Doctor Strange map for the, uh, you know, spells and magic theme and all that, that, all that good stuff we got going on. So, uh, yeah, this set is... Definitely the highlight, I think, of the arc for me. Okay, so we have Versus 2 PCG, Into the Darkness, uh, Darkness and Light, Volume 4, uh, number 3. Let's take a look at the box. Uh, this terrifying, terrifying conclusion to the Darkness and Light story arc for Versus System 2 PCG provides an unnerving glimpse of the undead creatures that go bump in the night as well as the uniquely qualified heroes brave enough to shine a light on them. Journey into the shadows if you dare, and challenge your opponent with the powers of darkness and light. All right. Let's go ahead and open this bad boy. I'll hover over the rule sheet quickly. Uh, I believe there are some contradictions in this rule sheet with how um, vehicle equipments are supposed to work. The rule sheet differs from the spoiler article, I think. I'm not going to get into that, really, because I don't think that's even been... Officially ruled on on which one is correct, the article or the rule sheet. So we're just going to hover briefly. Yeah, so here's the part on uh, vehicles, vehicle equipment. All right. Very nice. Let's go ahead and get into these cards. All right, first up, we have Blade main character. Finally have Blade in the game. Really excited to see this guy. Uh, if I can get this camera to focus in well. All right, so we have Blade main character. He is a 3-3 three, three range, 6 health defender's character. He has martial artist, so he has plus 2, plus 2 in melee combat. And then he has Vampire Hunter, level up 7. When Blade makes a melee attack, he gains 1 XP. If, he, uh, if the defender is evil, he gains 2 XP instead. If the defender has a power with Vampire in its name, he gains 3 XP instead. So, the martial artist is good. He has 6 health. He's on an amazing team, obviously. Um, the level up is very slow. Like, criminally slow. Like, way too slow. <laughs> um, but his level 2 is so cool if you can ever get him to flip. Uh, he's a 6-6 six, six range, 6 health. He still has martial artist. He has raised the stakes. At the start of your turn, put a stake counter on Blade if he doesn't have one. While Blade is in melee combat... Any time you could play an ancient combat plot twist, you may remove a state counter from him to wound an enemy character in the combat. Really cool. Uh, it doesn't say supporting character on there, by the way. Then he has Synthetic Blood Serum. Main green heal a wound from Blade. At the end of your turn, if Blade didn't use a superpower, uh, wound him. So he has healing on a main character, which is obviously good. Uh, the flavor of it is fantastic. With the, He has to take the Blood Serum, otherwise he hurts himself. Um... It sucks that he, like, wounds himself, but, like, if, you, if you're if you playing it right and, like, you can just reuse your, like, maybe you're playing, like, Build a Better Worlds or something, uh, then that shouldn't be an issue. Again, the, the level up on him is the main issue, so I think that's going to really hinder his playability at, like, tournament tables, but I also think it's a really cool uh, card. This guy is so sweet, though. Here we go. We have Deacon Frost. Um, he's a 2-4-5 health underworld character. He is evil scientist. Build green. Move a face-up enemy supporting character to your side. That character may pay a green to cancel this effect. Uh, and then he has recruit volunteers. Level up one. When an enemy character moves to your side from evil scientist, Deacon gains an XP. So if they want to just keep paying greens, they can keep you off this. Uh, if they're not on greens in their deck and they don't have exactly a wild location for that character, then they can't avoid it. Um, and then you just get to level up on like turn one. Or they can like constantly crash their guys in. Uh, or they cannot play characters, uh, which is also good for you. So, all right, let's see what he does at level two. He's a seven seven five healthy as vampire. When Deacon KOs a defending character in melee combat and survives, put a vitality counter on him. That's super strong on a main character. And then he has doppelganger powers. Uh, when Deacon wounds a defending supporting character in melee combat and that character is not KO'd, its owner searches their deck for a copy of that character and puts it onto your side. 
If there are no copies in the deck, they must reveal it. So, like, you kill something, then you get to steal it, right? When Deacon wounds a defending supporting character in melee combat, that character is not... Hang on. Sorry, I gotta read this again. This is all... I, I haven't looked at this since it was spoiled. When Deacon wounds a defending supporting character in melee combat, and that character is not KO'd, so if he hits it but doesn't KO it, uh, its owner searches their deck for a copy of that character and puts it onto your side... If there are no copies in the deck, they must reveal it. Okay, yeah. So if you hit something but don't KO it, you get to get to snatch one. That's so, so cool. Here we go. Here's the guy himself, Morbius. He is an unaffiliated main character. He's a 1-5 flight character with 5 health. He has genius at the start of your turn. Draw a card. That's one of my favorite powers in the game. Really cool to see it on a main character. And he has experiment gone wrong. Level up 9. When you draw any number of cards, Morbius gains that many XP. When Morbius levels up... KO a supporting character on your side. And then at level 2, he has no superpowers, just all good words. He is a 6-8 now. He is genius. He has the hunger, which is uh, Morbius can melee attack characters in his own front row. And then he has Vampire on him again, just like uh, Deacon Frost does. So when Morbius KOs a defending character in melee combat, it survives, put a vitality counter on him. So, like, it synergizes with, like, the hunger, which lets you KO your, attack your own guys. So, like, if they're not putting guys on the board for you to um, vampire off of or you can't hit one of their guys, you could just hit one of your own guys. And, like, I'm sure there's also cool synergies you can do where, like, maybe, like, I'll hit, like, my own Mantis or something. And this, I just think this guy's so cool. The design of it is really cool. Um, yeah, I think Morbius and Deacon Frost um, are more competitive probably than Blade. But I, I like the design of all of them, actually. And uh, it's cool to see a, a, n a new unaffiliated main character, and I like that like he doesn't have any superpowers on him, so he doesn't suffer from not having a wild location. He's all keywords, which is really cool. The only problem with him being unaffiliated is that like now he's not going to be legal for like any formats, uh, which is criminal. But uh, he's really cool. This is the guy who makes uh, the spell mechanic not terrible. <laughs> we have one cost Wong. He's a one 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 health. He's dual affiliated Avengers and Defenders, and then he has in service to the Sorcerer Supreme. When Wong appears, you may search your deck for a spell, reveal it, and put it into your hand, and then he has martial artist, so plus you, plus you, melee combat. Uh, yeah, a one-cost guy that's not one of a kind. You can play four of this guy, and he searches for spells. Grab whichever one you want. Uh, definitely makes the spell mechanic way, way, way better, way more consistent. That guy's really, really cool. All right, we have Frank Drake, three costs, four, four, range, one health, defender. Uh, he has Night Stalker, so Night Stalkers on your side have Lethal. This is a keyword we're going to see a lot. Each one is different. So this Night Stalker gives Night Stalkers Lethal. And then he has Inventor, Build Yellow, Drake creates an invention. So we have uh, Inventors on turn 3 now that you can just... Uh, we, we already saw one 3-cost Inventor in the last set, but that's the one where it's the Stroke of Genius. We have to protect it for a turn. This one, you can just play this and pay a yellow and invent. So that's pretty crazy. We'll get to look at uh, what he invents later on, his uh, his specific invention. Uh, we have the Hood, 3 cost, Underworld, 5, 3, range, 1 health, and he has blue spellcaster, so the Hood can cast blue spells. And then he has Dormammu's Gifts, the Hood can cast spells from your deck. Another thing that makes spells way more consistent, you know, before they were all one of a kind. Uh, well, this one can play them from the deck, so you can get whichever one you want, uh, so long as it's a blue spell. Uh, it's worth noting that uh, the hood can cast spells from your deck so he has to be the one to cast it and he can only cast blue spells so you're only able to play your blue spells from your deck so um, that's worth noting uh, oh man this one has so many words on it oh man we have Mantle Lilith uh, Lilith is a 4 cost 4, 5, 2 health uh, she's a green spell caster um, so she can cast green spells she has old as the dawn of humanity at the start of your main phase Resolve the next one in order from the following list. Woman, daze an enemy supporting character. Angel, stun an enemy supporting character. Demon, wound an enemy supporting character. Goddess, KO an enemy supporting character. And Spirit, remove an enemy supporting character from the game. Then shuffle Lilith into her owner's deck. Um, it's a cool card. It's very slow. Um, I mean, they're all good. But like to get the full value out of this, you have to protect it for like a really long time, which I don't really see happening. But, I mean, it's a cool design. Um, here we go. We have Hannibal King. He's a 5 cost, 5-5 five, five range, 2 health defender. Um, oh, I think, what team was Lilith? She's unaffiliated. Anyway, so uh, Hannibal King, he also has Night Stalker. He gives Night Stalker's Berserker. And then he has Reluctant Vampire. While Hannibal is wounded, when he KOs a defending character in melee combat and survives, put a vitality counter on him. 
Uh, so he has to be hurt in order to uh, to be that desperate to to become a vampire. So um, that's really cool. Well, I mean, he's always a vampire, but to 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 act on it, I guess. All right, we have five cost man thing. A monsters unleash card is in here, you guys. Gosh, this is the crossover set that we wanted. All right, uh, he's a four seven flight two health. He has enhanced durability. If man thing gets stunned other than by getting struck in combat, he doesn't get wounded. I think this is a pretty does nothing power. We've seen it before. I don't really think it's relevant. Uh, Guardian of the Nexus of All Realities. Reaction green. When an enemy player recruits a character that isn't a Marvel Illustrated Universe card, put it into its owner's hands. So cool. Um, I think maybe this is them realizing that they made photo stuff too strong. Um, it's also good against like predators, right? Um, but uh, yeah, I just I like I like the the design space of that. It's an interesting direction they're going. Uh, Deacon Frost supporting character. I don't remember what this card does. Uh, he's a 9-6, 1 health. Underworld character. He's a vampire, so if he wounds... Sorry, if he KOs a defending character in melee combat and survives, put a vitality counter on him. That's a good power. Uh, he is, I've given you a purpose. Other supporting characters on your side have vamp... Oh, that's so cool. Okay, he makes everybody else a vampire. That's really cool. Wow, and, uh, Underworld, I think, needed a 6-drop. That's cool. Um... Speaking of cool six drops, uh, we have unaffiliated Morbius here. He's a six cost, seven seven flight to health. He is genius, so you start your turn, you're gonna draw a card. He's regeneration, so at the start of your turn, you're gonna heal a wound from him. And then he's immortal, so when Morbius gets KO'd, you may shuffle him into his owner's deck. Super cool card. Um, I don't know really how he's gonna stack up against other sixes. I mean, like he's not thing or redshift, but he's got a bunch of good keywords on him. I like that they just like on Morbius. We're just gonna stack all the good keywords. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, we have 7 cost Blade. He's a 6-6 six, six range, 2 health defender. He has Night Stalker. His version gives Night Stalkers Ferocious. He has Master Martial Artist, so he has plus 4, plus 4 melee combat. So he's a 10-10 ten, ten in melee combat. And then he has Daywalker. Blade has plus 4, plus 4 while in combat with at least one enemy supporting character. So if it's a melee combat and it's a, um evil supporting character, he's a 14. Um... I don't know that he hangs with other sevens, really. Um, even on, like, defenders, defenders have Ghost Rider and Power Man, which to me are, like, really underrated cards uh, in the current game. Uh, I think both those cards are really, really strong. Um, but he's cool. I think he could get there. I think this Night Stalker sub-theme um, could be really cool if you jam in all the Night Stalkers. So in that way, I actually think uh, there's, like, a really cool, like, probably, like, Night Stalker tribal deck you could make. Um, yeah, it's a cool sub-mechanic. All right, we have some inventions here. we go. All right, so we have the zero-cost exorcist gun. It's a defender's equipment, um, or a defender's invention, rather. Uh, it's invention one, so you only get one, and then it has necro attack. Equipped character has range and plus three attack while making a range attack. Uh, when equipped character KOs an evil defending supporting character in range combat, remove it from the game, then search its owner's deck for each copy of that character and remove it from the game. That's really good. Here we have a new type of card here. We have a one-cost Blackbird. It's an equipment, and it's a vehicle. It says Vehicle 4, so that's the number of passengers it can hold. Uh, it's Invention 1, so you only get one, and then it has the X-Jet. The Blackbird can only be equipped to X-Men characters. The Blackbird has the following cumulative powers based on the total number of characters... Or so, or sorry, I face up passengers. So basically how it works is um, when you play this, you pick a number of passengers, and you it's equipped to all of them at once. They go into the X-Jet, right? Um... There, again, as I said, there's a discrepancy between the rule sheet and the spoiler article. It was said that, like, you can move characters out of the X-Jet, like, they can parachute out, but you can't move characters into the X-Jet, because, like, they can't jump in while it's in flight. Um, the rule sheet, I think, contradicts that, so I don't actually know how it works with taking characters in and out of the, the vehicle once it's been played. I, I don't know how it works yet, so, like, that's, you'll just have to wait and see on that one, um, which way they rule it, because... The, the article says one thing and the rule sheet says one thing, um, so I don't really know. Although, I mean, that's just actually what I heard. I didn't actually read the rule sheet. We can maybe check. All right, so depending on the number of passengers, um, if, it, if you have one passenger, uh, pilot, equipped characters have flight. Two passengers, co-pilot, equipped character has plus one. Equipped characters have plus one, plus one. Cloaking device, that's three characters. Uh, equipped characters have dodge. And then for Cerebro, you pay one less to recruit X-Men characters. So yeah, it's a, it's a really cool new um, type of card. Really excited to see what they do with vehicles. Um, let's see, we have Power Neutralizer. It's another X-Men equipment, or another X-Men invention, rather. It's Invention 1 again. It has Power Down. 
Equip character has range. Defenders losing can't gain powers while in range combat uh, with equipped character. Um, yeah, it seems really good. Making people lose powers is always good. Just extra tools, right? Uh, we have another X-Men invention. Because uh, we, we, we got that X-Men inventor whose name I don't remember in the last set. So here's all his, uh, his inventions. A chronal tracker. It's an X-Men plot twist invention. Main, remove a sporting character on your side from the game with its counters and equipment. At the start of each of your turns, you may put it onto its owner's side. So it says each of your turns because you get to, rem you get to remove it, blink it out, and then like you get to choose when you want to bring it back. So the triggers at the start of your every turn, but like if you want to wait 10 turns to bring it back, you can. So that's an interesting way to do it. Uh, here's a really interesting card. We have the, the Montessi formula. Am I butchering that? The Montessi formula? Anyway, it's a Marvel plot twist. It's a one-of-a-kind blue spell. It has one page in the Book of Sins. You may only play this if Darkhold is on your side. Main, choose a keyword power and stun each enemy supporting character with that power. If you choose a power with a vampire in its name, KO those characters instead. So a really cool design here where it's, uh, it synergizes with uh, the Darkhold. Uh, it's, that's two one-of-a-kind cards that you need for this to work. Um, but they're both pretty searchable. Because you can, you can grab this with Wong, and you can grab the Darkhold with, like, um, Wakanda. That's a lot of work, but, I mean, it's a cool design. Uh, let's see. In Good Hands, I love this card. Um, any turn combat, plot twist, good loyalty. Put this in card, sorry, put this in your deck only if each card with a team affiliation and each character in your deck is good. Uh, it's an updated wording on good loyalty. And then it's any turn combat, choose an enemy attacker, it can't strike this combat. Very good. Generic think again. Uh, well, generic. Uh, generic for if you're playing all good characters in your deck. That card's really, really good. I think this one's less good, but both of these cards are really cool. I like that. Oh, wow. You guys see that? Yeah, I definitely didn't do that. That definitely came like that. That's a bummer. Um, yeah, I don't know if you can see how the corner of this card is bent all to hell. Yikes. Um, that doesn't happen very often to me, um, but that's kind of a bummer. All right, we have uh, a necessary evil. Evil loyalty, put this in your deck only if each card with a team affiliation and each character in your deck is evil. Combat, choose an attacker on your side. It strikes an additional time this combat. So, uh, yeah, I think that it, it, it's a cool card. Uh, it's, it reminds me of, like, it's like a mini Iron Fist Punch or something, or like a mini Charlie 27 or something like that, just like, like to get you that extra, that extra oomph to hit something that you wouldn't normally be able to hit. Um, but of the two, first of all, I really like that they're doing stuff like this, uh, the good loyalty and evil loyalty thing. But of the two, I think this uh, In Good Hands card is actually particularly um, incredible, if I'm being honest. Generic Think Again is uh, really, really strong. Um, so yeah, that's Into Darkness. Uh, this is a bummer. I don't know if I'm going to email them about this. Uh, like, it's not enough, really, that like I wouldn't be able to play it. Like, I could flatten that out and play it in a deck if I wanted to. Um but yeah, I love this set. It's so cool. It's the crossovers. This arc has turned out to be like the crossover that like I wanted, right? Um, I love the good loyalty, evil loyalty things, particularly in good hands. This card is really cool design. Uh, like if you're playing like that Darkhold combo deck, you probably just play this, right? Like um, if you draw it, you draw it. Uh, although you do need a spellcaster, so maybe not. Um, I don't know. This kind, this like this, this card has like a lot of stipulations on it that I think um, take it down for me a little bit uh x-men inventions <laughs> so cool especially the the vehicle one uh the exorcist gun defenders inventions so cool um i'm excited to try like a night stalker deck or yeah is what called night stalker yeah morbius is cool deacon frost is cool especially because like i think this team um underworld is a really strong mono team anyway but uh, they don't really have a good six drop um uh, man thing who would have thought we'd get monsters unleashed stuff Hannibal King, he's one of the Night Stalkers, yes, definitely going to try him. Lilith definitely has a lot of words. Uh, the Hood, the Hood makes spells way more playable. Um, Frank Drake, <laughs> inventing on turn three. It's, oh man, that's got to be so good, right? Um, Wong definitely makes inventions way more play. or sorry, uh, spells way more playable, look out for that. I love the Morbius main character. Deacon Frost seems really strong. Um... I think they made Blade a little too slow. They could have pushed him a little bit, and it probably would have been fine. Um, so I, I don't think you see Blade at tournament tables, which is a little disappointing. But I do think that he's a... Uh, I, I like the design of him. Um, he's very flavorful and all that. So, uh, yeah, overall, big thumbs up to Into the Darkness. And uh, an overall, a thumbs up to the arc as a whole. 
um, the darkness and light arc. Anyway, let me know what you guys think down below. Which was your favorite of the three sets in the darkness and light arc? Who's your favorite new main character? Let me know all that stuff down below, and I'll see you guys next time. Later.